Well, you all have heard of Murphy's Law, right? Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. There's also the first corollary to that is nothing is ever is as easy as it looks. Well, I mean, the first, the Murphy's Law of auto mechanics is that when your hands are totally greasy, that's when your nose starts to itch. Murphy's Laws of highway construction is the busiest highways contain the most construction barrels, right? Murphy's Law of government spending is whatever goes up stays up. Entitlements never disappear. Well, last Sunday, we began a nine-part sermon series on the book of Job, a powerful book about how do we trust in God, even the midst when life seems to be falling apart around us. And I don't say that lightly because all of us have experienced pain and hurt and trouble, tragedy and catastrophe in our lives. The question Job seeks to answer is not so much, why do good people suffer, but why do the righteous, why do Christians still worship God even though they suffer? On each Sunday in Lent, on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and on Easter, we will dig into the wisdom of Job. Last Sunday, Job taught us how to, taught us how to fly blind. Today, we learn about Job's law. Now, most of the time we say, oh, well, things could be worse. Job's law is nothing is so bad that it can't get worse. The Old Testament lesson. One moment, everything is going well, and the next moment, all hell breaks loose as Satan launches his weapons of mass destruction. In what seems to be the ingredients of a person's worst nightmare, Job is left totally devastated. He learns that his oxen are taken away in a raid, and so there goes his farming equipment. Then his camels and donkeys are taken away, there goes his transportation. His sheep are burned up and all his servants are put to the sword. It's like everything in life came crashing in on him. And if it wasn't enough then, that all his financial empire has fallen into ruins. The market crashes. His assets tumble. His Livestock portfolio is devastated. Shocked and dumbfounded, Job looks out the window to the skies that seem to be getting even darker. He starts praying, thinking that things can't get any worse, but that's exactly what they do. Still reeling from his financial losses, word comes of a de even deeper personal tragedy. A storm has blown in and has killed all his children, all ten of them. It never rains. It pours. Man, it pours. Like Job, when tragedy or catastrophe hits our lives, strikes us, we have three choices. We can either let it destroy us, we can let it define us, or we can let it develop us. If you play the victim card, if you live as a per perpetual victim, blaming your past or blaming someone else for your current circumstances and, and problems, you're letting the past tragedies, you're letting those situations define and destroy you. You're never advanced in life playing a victim. Victimization does not let you deal and overcome the past. Thus, you are psychologically held down and held back. But in today's reading from Job, he illustrates how even in the worst of things happening in our lives, you can 
develop. You can grow. How? By the art of surrender. What? Surrender? Surrender's not in my vocabulary. Hey, I'm a red-blooded American here. We do not surrender or retreat. Ha <laughs> ha, though. Peter, you're thinking earthly thoughts. You're not thinking heavenly, kingdom of God thoughts. Surrender is what Job did. Job, who was blameless and upright, a man who shunned or who feared God and shunned evil. The text says, at this Job got up, tore his robe, and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The temptation in our grief, in our tragedy, is to turn away from God. The temptation is to run from Him. The temptation is to go as far away as you can from Him. Because we believe that God has somehow responsible for what's happening here. And if God has allowed this to happen, then I am mad. I'm angry. I'm shocked. I'm heartbroken. So we run. And all of these emotions are okay. Let me say that again. All these emotions are okay, but they don't benefit us in the long term. Long term, we have to figure out how to be in the presence of our Lord in worship once again. And Job found a way. In the midst of harrowing experiences, in the midst of tragedies that would overwhelm the most hardened person, Job was able to worship. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How could he worship at such a time as this? Because of what last week's reading said, this was Job's regular custom. Job's worship was directed to the only one who could do anything about his situation. His worship was directed to the one who was in control of all things, Yahweh. With a word, Yahweh created the heavens and the earth. With a word, Yahweh destroyed the world in a flood. With a word, Yahweh could heal. He could rescue. He could rebuke. He could chasten. Yahweh is the most common name for God in the Old Testament. 6,000 times that name is used in the Old Testament. Yahweh comes from the Hebrew to be verb, Yihya. And it means that God is the great I am. God is the eternal being. Yahweh is creator and preserver. So Job surrenders to him through worship. Because through regular worship, he has learned that God is faithful and just slow to anger and abounding in love. Through regular worship, he surrenders to Yahweh because he has learned to trust Yahweh. In the same way, we surrender to our Lord Jesus Christ because he is Yahweh in the flesh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Another name that Job uses for God in, in the book here is El Shaddai. El Shaddai, or in English, the Almighty, is used 31 times in Job and only 16 other times elsewhere in the Old Testament. Job loves the name El Shaddai. 
quite often when bad news comes our way, really bad news, our initial reaction is no. No, this, this can't be happening. This, this can't be true. I, I don't believe it. No, this isn't real. Because our minds reject bad news. Our initial reaction is, I don't believe this is happening. El Shaddai, the Almighty, reminds us that God is in control and we aren't. That's where surrender comes in. Surrender is accepting reality. No matter what the loss is, no matter how bad the news, at some point, though, we need to say, it's over. It's done. I cannot change anything. I surrender not as a victim, not with a grudge, not with a hard heart, I surrender through acceptance. Acceptance doesn't mean that I don't care. Acceptance doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt. Acceptance doesn't mean that I now see this as something good in my life. That's not acceptance. Acceptance means that I can't change it. God is El Shaddai. Is there something in your life that you need to accept that's over. Maybe it's a relationship that's over. You keep praying that that person will call. They're not coming back. It's over. Some of you may have had a dream or a big goal in your life that hasn't happened. Is it over? What in your life do you need to say, it's done. You need a new dream, a new vision, a new goal for your life. It's the second step. Surrender through acceptance. When we experience a devastating or catastrophic loss, it's normal for us to feel that the end. It's all over. I'm done. Ruined forever. Nothing good is going to come of this. It's all lost. We lose all hope. Job in our text also reminds us that we need to surrender in hope. The book of Job presents us with the names of God, Yahweh and El Shaddai. And now he also introduces this to another name for God that he uses in the book, Eloah. He uses it 41 times in Job, and only, it's only occurs 16 times elsewhere in the Old Testament. Most biblical scholars say that Eloah comes from the verb go up. God, Eloah, is the one who takes a person who is down and lifts them up. Eloah takes a person who is in the pit and sets them on level ground. Eloah is the one who takes death and brings life out of it. So it means that whatever we're going through, it's not the end of the story. Eloah promises that he will bring beauty from ashes. You see, one of the ways that people try to deal with the problem of evil in the world is that they become dualists. Uh, this is the idea that there are two equal and opposite forces battling out in the world, you know, good and evil, uh, God and Satan. All the good that happens belongs to God, and all the bad that happens comes from Satan. The result is that God bears no responsibility for the suffering because that's not, uh, that's not his, really his fault. It is Satan's fault. But by doing that, what you do is you raise Satan to be co-equal with God as an anti-God. Um, and while Satan is 
Scripture is clear that Satan is just an evil angel. He is not an anti-God in any way equal to God. Instead, Job presents to us a God who is Elohim. Whenever happens, his final word to death, emotional, relational, physical death, is always and forever resurrection. Satan is involved in our lives, in this world, but he is not a second God, a dark force equal to the light force. He is defeated by Eloah, who on Easter Sunday brought life from death, beauty from ashes, resurrection from crucifixion. Do you understand what that means? It means that you and I can surrender to our present circumstances knowing that this is not the end. Our hope is an eternal hope. Sadness, sorrow, and sickness will never, ever have the last word. Ever. On February 6, 1870, uh, George Miller uh, of Bristol, England, lost his wife, Mary. She died of rheumatic fever. They had been married for 39 years. George found enough strength in the Lord to preach at his wife's funeral. And in that funeral sermon, George said, I miss my wife in numberless ways, and I shall miss her more and more. But as a Christian, as a follower of my Lord Jesus Christ, I bow to the will of my Heavenly Father, and I pray, Thy will be done. I kiss continually the hand that has afflicted me. Another word for that is surrender. I surrender to these present circumstances that I cannot change because I have God's names. Yahweh, El Shaddai, Eloah, and all of these are found in the greatest name, Jesus. So I thank God for the gifts while I have them, and I release them when the time comes to let them go. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away, and then I worship. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen.